Hello friends, I'm Reverend Doug Neufeld here at Trinity United Brandon and uh, welcome you once again to our online virtual worship that uh, we started ever since uh, the certain uh, uh, controls have been put into place concerning the pandemic, pandemic situation. And uh, so we thank you for joining us and uh, we also uh, um, invite you to join us for uh, our Good Friday service that uh, will be available uh, Good Friday morning, and as well as a communion uh, Easter Sunday service. Our uh, tradition here at Trinity is to do communion on Easter Sunday, and we will continue to do so. And so we invite you uh, to have some virtual communion. So in, to prepare for that, uh, you might want to have some juice or some bread available that uh, you can uh, uh, use in your own space. But now let us prepare ourselves for this time. And so I invite you to uh, clear your minds and open your hearts to the Spirit of God. On the back of a humble donkey, Christ looks beyond the shout of Hosanna in the highest. He is traveling a slow journey to the cross, and he will pay the price of turning the tables on the money changers, upsetting the status quo, and living authentically before God. Will he travel that road alone? Let us pray. Blessed one, we, hum we are humbled by your example. You entered Jerusalem in lowly estate, riding on a donkey. You emptied yourself and came as a servant to all, forsaking the power to command. Son of David, come to us now and be our king, that we too may sing our hosannas. Amen. So something that's been missing in our virtual worship is the music. We normally have a choir, we usually have the piano, we have great congregational singing. And so um, I invite you at this time, if you look below in the description, you'll see uh, a heading of uh, the hymn, He Came Riding on a Donkey from Voices United 124. And, uh, and below that you'll see uh, a link to a video, a YouTube video, uh, from Strathroy United Church back in 2011, and uh, where they play this hymn as they do the entrance into their worship place space, uh, waving their palm fronds, and uh, and uh, so I invite you to enjoy that video. And uh, so if you click that link, it will take you right there. But you might want to remember to uh, in pausing where you're pausing, so that uh, when you come back, that you uh, start from this point. Uh, and uh, or if not, you can just uh, continue on without pausing and enjoy the video uh, after uh, the benediction. Our scripture reading today is Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the, daughter of of Z Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey on a and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered 
Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. So we're all quite familiar with the Palm Sunday story. I'm, I'm certain that most of you uh, uh, are familiar with it. We, we celebrate Palm Sunday every year, the Sunday uh, before Easter Sunday. It uh, uh, marks the beginning of Holy Week. And, uh, and uh, all four Gospels tell this story. And, uh, and this year we're looking at uh, Matthew's account. Now, the story is basically the same in all four Gospels, uh, but Matthew has this interesting, funny, little different detail. And uh, it's in verse 5. It says, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And so... You might think that uh, this is a bit of a translation glitch or something, but then again in verse 7, it reads, They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. I mean, when you read this, like Jesus is riding in on two donkeys, like a donkey and his colt. I mean, this is how it reads. How, how is Jesus riding in on two donkeys. And, and, and not only that, it's, it's stated like that in two different verses. It's stated quite clearly. And uh, I don't know about you, but when I think about this, you know, when I read this, I envision this, I think of, you know, at times when I've seen a circus and there's those equestrian type stunt riders and, you know, and, and some woman is, you know, standing with one foot on, on one on each of two horses with the, with the hands on the reins for both. And so here's this vision of Jesus, you know, riding into Jerusalem uh, with one foot on each of these two donkeys holding the reins, waving to the crowds. Is this how Jesus entered Jerusalem? Well, the, what is actually happening here is that Matthew is using, slash quoting, Zechariah 9.9 9, uh, to tell this story. And, he, and he's specifically using this to help then demonstrate Zechariah's prophecy being fulfilled. Which, and Zechariah 9.9 9 goes like this. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion, Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victoria is he, victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. See, the problem is, is that Matthew is making the grave error of taking this scripture too literal and, and then it, therefore actually misquoting Zechariah. And... All the time, I speak to the dangers of taking Scripture too literal. Uh, taking a verse, a single verse at face value, instead of understanding the context and the situation that they're being used. And here's an actual example of one Bible author making that very mistake with an earlier Scripture. Because it's not a donkey and a colt, it's a donkey that is still a colt. One animal, not two. And this is the way that the other three Gospels tell it. So then the next thing is to understand the political statement being made in this story. Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a colt, very small donkey, on cloaks with people waving palm fronds. And there's a very specific image that's being depicted here. And how that relates is, is that we know from the, the historical text that Pilate had arrived at Jerusalem roughly the same time. Now, not maybe exactly at the same time, but in very close proximity. Now, Pilate's entry into Jerusalem from the west would have been 
on a great white stallion coming in with legions of soldiers with their polished uh, armor, spears, swords, shields, all marching in unison. And this, this grand entrance into Jerusalem, uh, heeding the new uh, leader sent by the emperor. And this is the example of the force, the oppressive force of Rome entering Jerusalem. And then on the other side of town, coming from the east, is, is Jesus on a tiny little colt, surrounded by people waving branches, common people, the, the so-called degenerates, the, the, tax collector, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, uh, the poor, the shabby, uh, this, this contrasting dynamic of Jesus, the King, the Messiah, that, that some envision will save them, the one that they, they hope would rise up to, to bring up an army that will defeat their oppressive Roman occupiers and uh, push them out of Jerusalem so that they could go back to the life that they, their, their ancestors remembered. And so here's this contrasting difference. And this is what starts to create some discourse. Because obviously Jesus is not sending that same image that Pilate did coming in on one side. The, the, the balance of power is, is extreme. How is this Jesus going to save us from these oppressors? And that's because that's not why Jesus is here. That's not how Jesus is going to save them. It won't be through the power and force of armies. And then the last thing I want to point out revolves around the use of the word Hosanna. In verse 9 we read, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Now, if I was to ask you, what does Hosanna mean? Uh, many people might answer that it, Hosanna is kind of like another word for a word like hallelujah, that it's a, that's a term of celebration, of, of praising to God, of, uh, of the, the wonderful arrival of the son of David. But uh, Hosanna doesn't actually mean this. Hosanna is literally translated to save us. What we are hearing is, save us, son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the Lord. Save us in the highest heaven. And so, now I wonder how many of you are connecting to this now. Save us, son of David. You know, in our current situation of pandemic, the protocols in place, social distancing, self-isolation. I mean, I would probably accurately guess that many more people are praying now than maybe a few months ago. And that's okay. That's all right. And that's understandable. God understands. You know, we turn to God more in times of crisis, and, and God is there for us in that. And so when we think about the situation, the fear that many people are feeling, the anxiety into the circumstance, trying to keep yourself safe, trying to keep your family safe, trying to keep others safe around you, uh, we are lifting up our voice more and more to God to save us, to help us. And we can take great, great consolation in this image of Palm Sunday, as Jesus rides it humbly into our lives and answers our call to please save us. Because Jesus will save us as described as the Savior. And as we move forward through Holy Week, we go through the story of the Passion and it all uh, escalates into the great celebration of Easter Sunday.
Amen. So as we move into our time of uh, prayers, of intercession, I, I ask you to reflect on those people or things and situations for which you are thankful. And I ask you to lift up in prayer those in your heart. Any thoughts of concern or lamentation, uh, bring forward those prayers at this time. Let us pray. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and wonder, and yet we see so much hurt and betrayal that harm the world and its peoples. We trust that your love has power in all situations, even the most troubling or tragic. So hear us as we bring to you our concerns for the people and places on our hearts this day. We pray for people who struggle with poverty, sickness, or grief, and the pandemic which has only amplified these situations. Touch them in their pain and restore in them their hope and health. We pray for people and communities burdened by the weight of war, greed, hostility, or jealousy. Lift their burdens and restore their hope and peace. We pray for people who challenge regimes marked by tyranny, domination, and brutality. Liberate their lives and restore their hope and freedom. And we pay for, pray for people who are persecuted for their race, or creed, or identity, or for the truth they tell, and for those who are not treated with respect or decency. Rescue them from discrimination and restore their hope and dignity. Hear us as we pray to you in silence for those situations close to our hearts this day. Bring your grace to restore hope and healing where they are needed. We offer all that we are and all that we hope for through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, knowing that you are our mother and our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So just a few things before I close this time. Um, and so I uh, encourage you to visit our website, and all you need to do is search Trinity United Church Brandon. Uh, the first hit should uh, bring you to our, our website, and uh, uh, where we've, uh, this video will be posted, as, as well as uh, uh, previous uh, week's videos. And uh, we've added a, ch uh, Nikki's added a page this week, um, you know, for all of you that are stuck at home, I mean, blessed at home spending time with your children and are uh, uh, interested in ways to uh, entertain them at this time of, uh, of, uh, of your family's isolation. Uh, we've created a children's activity page for Holy Week uh, where there's all kinds of great arts and crafts and thing with the Holy Week uh, theme. And so uh, I encourage you to visit that page uh, and utilize the materials there. And also at this time when we are social distancing and self-isolating, we may feel like there's not much that we can do. You may be asking yourself how you can fulfill your desire to be disciples of Christ. How can we do that when we're stuck at home? How can we do something to provide relief to our community or to the world? Well, Financial gifts are always an option. 
helping hands, our soup kitchen here at uh, Brandon is in dire need of support. Um, whether you have a, uh, a safe way to, to drop off goods or, or you can uh, go to their webpage and make a financial donation uh, that will help out. The, the need is great and yet the resources have dropped off and that's never a good equation. Uh, Samaritan House is in the same situation and, and so you might think to, to uh, give a helping hand to them. Or you can give to the church and utilize the church to help facilitate the di discipleship, to, to uh, help uh, those in the world of need. And uh, again, you can go to our website and uh, we have a donate button there. We'll show you how you can make an e-transfer donation or you can uh, mail to use good old fashioned mail, uh, write a check and send to either Helping Hands, Samaritan House, Trinity United Church, however you are moved to help those uh, that need help. Feel free to treat yourself with the blessing of discipleship. And so as we prepare to go on with your day, let the gates of righteousness are thrown wide. Let us go with God's blessing. The path of salvation is made plain. Let us go in Christ's truth. The cornerstone of our faith is sure. Let us go with the Spirit's grace. Go with God and walk with Christ during this holy week. Amen.